Now it's been about seven months since the last builder's guide to nuts and bolts, and so I figured it was about time to bring it back. Today we're going to be having a look at the remote control glitch, which is a glitch I've been aware of since back in the days of the Banjo Kazooie forum, but never really bothered to really play much around with it. As far as I remember, it was discovered by someone who realized that a balloon that should really not be able to be powered was able to be activated despite the fact that it was no longer attached to their vehicle. And once that was found, there was a bit of a feeding frenzy on the forum as people experimented with it, which eventually resulted in what would become known as a remote control glitch. As is unfortunately rather common with glitches discovered in the early days of banjo kazooie Nuts and Bolts, I cannot actually properly give proper credit to the discoverer of this glitch, because all of that information was on the forum, which is now long gone. However, I will point out that I'm not the first person to document this on YouTube, and that I'm not only well aware that the channel My Game Playing beat me to the punch, but I also used his video as a refresher of how the glitch works before I got into doing my own video. He doesn't really go into much of a tutorial on it, and only speaks about it for one minute, and the design he shows, which I think might be based on the original design, is also kind of unnecessarily complicated for the purposes of a tutorial. So hopefully I can bring a few more things to the table that my game playing didn't, and if you would like to check out his video, a link to it is available in the description. So without any further ado, this is the remote control glitch broken down into its most simple necessary components. As with all of these builder's guides, there's plenty of things you can do to make them look and function considerably better. However, these tutorials are meant to show you the mechanisms behind the designs, and so I try to keep them as simple as possible. And it probably doesn't get that much more simple than only 10 parts. Well, it actually kind of does, because only six parts of the vehicle are actually necessary features of the remote control glitch. It's just that without the other parts, it wouldn't be able to move, and there's not really much point of being able to remote control something if that thing being controlled remotely can't actually move. So, the way this glitch works is in four parts. Firstly, you have the part of your vehicle that has the driver's seat on it, which can be as large as you want, and is connected via a detacher to a second part of your vehicle which has on it a tow bar. This first tow bar, or the second part of your vehicle, is in many sense the transmitter for your remote control. And the third section of your vehicle, which must consist of two tow bars, is in many sense the aerial. And then finally, the fourth and final part slash section is the actual part of the vehicle that you drive, so of course it must consist of whatever you want to be driven, whether it be a plane or a boat or a car, and since of course it will be operating under its own power, you must include in this fourth section any ammo, fuel or power that you wish to use. And it is on this fourth section that you must have connected a fourth tow bar, which sort of works as a receiver and connects the aerial to the part of your vehicle that will be controlled. So now when you look at it outside of the garage, it should appear like this. And to make it work, what you quite simply have to do is to detach the first part of your vehicle from the second part of the vehicle, which means that now the string of four tow bars and the part of the vehicle you want to control are now no longer connected to your driver's seat. Now hold down the right bumper in order to reattach the driver's seat, and while doing so, hold down the right trigger in order to move away the fourth and the third part of your vehicle away from the first and second. If done correctly, the third section, the middle two tow bars, will now be connected to the fourth section, the part you drive, while the second section, the first tow bar, will be once again connected via the detacher to the first section containing your driver's seat. Now as long as that third section, which I referred to earlier as the aerial, remains intact and connected to the fourth section, you will be able to control the fourth section as a remote control vehicle. As to why it works, well, as always for this section, I sort of have to wander over into the speculation territory because I don't really know that much about programming. But it seems to be that it's because the jolt of reattaching the second part of the vehicle with the tow bar to the first part of the vehicle is what actually disconnects it from the string of tow bars, the game doesn't really register that the four tow bars are no longer connected. Which means that since the first tow bar, the second part of your vehicle, is still connected to the main part of your vehicle despite the fact that it's not actually really connected to anything else anymore, the game continues to function as if it believes it is. Now of course this version of the vehicle was super simplified just to show the base necessities of the mechanism, so I'll show a slightly more in depth one that actually works a little better. So firstly improving the second part, it does seem to tend to work better if there's at least one block between the detacher and the tow bar, I'm not entirely certain why, it just definitely seems to. And also it works well to have a slightly larger base so when your driver's seat is connected to the second part, it doesn't keep falling over. The third part, the aerial, can really simply be improved by simply adding a super pole, or I guess any kind of pole but a super pole would be best, between the two tow bars that face opposite ways. This is rather simply because if you've ever played around with tow bars much, they tend to sometimes get crossed over when they're too close to each other, and having this one space between them really helps to prevent that. 
And then finally, the fourth section, the part you remote control, well, as long as the fourth tow bar's there, you can do really whatever you want with it. Here I've just added two more wheels and made it more powerful, but I mean, as you saw at the start, you can turn it into a plane, you can turn it into a boat, and really, as long as a vehicle doesn't depend on its functionality through tow bars or detachers, you can pretty much just retrofit this exploit into any existing vehicle you have. You can see here I've attached it to a random vehicle from the Witch v Witch Challenge series. So really, just let your imagination run wild and remote control whatever you'd like. And also adding further interest into this glitch is that the base, or part 1 and 2, doesn't actually need to be immobile. I've kept it as such for the duration of this tutorial because it makes it easier to explain, but if you want to add some wheels or wings or whatever to that, you can drive or fly it as well as driving or flying the part you're actually remote controlling. Now, I know what you're thinking at this point, but Grim, this build only requires four tow bars and there are eight available. Does that mean I can use the other four to create a second remote control vehicle and control three vehicles at once? And to answer your question rather simply, yes it does, and yes you can. So, there you have it, the remote control glitch. The only glitch in Banjo-Kazooie Nuts and Bolts that I'm aware of that allows you to fly three planes at once. So get out there, experiment with it in your own save, be creative, and most importantly, have fun. And as always, thanks for watching, and until next time, I have been and still am Grim Grindle.